I call myself Harry Trotter because uh, people called me Mr. Trotter when I was abroad. And I think it's fitting pretty well because I fled from home and I globetrotted the world with pain, fear and doubt. I was pretending to be this happy guy. Some people called me also a uh, ladies man. I tried to fit in with the expectations of my surroundings. I tried to make my surroundings happy and proud and I didn't show any of my emotions, any of my feelings. I could even say I was creating my own Truman Show, so I was harming myself already a lot inside. But because I didn't want to give in on that I was maybe sensitive, that I was thinking very widely about sexuality, that I had a different vision on life and that I had different values and beliefs, I tried to take distance from that world I was in and pretending I was fine, I was happy. And then I left. That was my only choice back then, I believe. I was 16 years old and I was walking from the train station back from school to home and I was emotional, I was in pain, I was struggling, I was lost, I would say. And something in me told me that, Harold, you will have to take action someday and I made a pact to myself that one day I would leave. So I was 16 back then, but I actually took action when I was 21. And that was my moment, and that was my moment for me to say, no further, I've given enough, I've killed myself too much. I want something different out of this life. I want to become a free man in this big world. That was a time of, uh, of even killing myself even more inside. That was a time I knew what I had to do to to take distance, to leave that place I was in, that cycle I couldn't break through. But the moment to get there was so long, was so exhausting, it took me so much energy and people around me didn't realize, they didn't see it. The more I pretended to be confident and this cool guy with, with women, with my family, with my friends, the more I felt very small inside. Maybe I should have shortened this process, but I couldn't back then. And in a way, I'm glad I've been through this because afterwards I really knew and felt even more what I needed to be happy and which kind of person I truly was. So I believe I had to go through this process of pain to even come back stronger. Once I left that place, that unhealthy environment, I realized I was someone I realized I was good at something. I realized I had a true passion as well. And it made me valuable. It made me understand that I also have the right to live, to, to be the person I want to be. The biggest lesson I've learned is to be you at all times, not just behind closed doors, not just with a few people, to put your fears into power and to be yourself at all times. Whoever you meet, which kind of situation you are, you stay respectful, you stay humble, you try not to judge. And at the end of the day, when you can take peace with your actions and your words, you're all good. I was trying to feel and to follow my gut feeling and to trust my gut feeling again, because for so many years I haven't. And then when you come to this new continent, this new country, this new life, you just realize that you have no other choice than to count on your inner gut feeling and yourself. I took, uh, like we say, my shit together and I went for that job that really triggered me. I, I started to work as a uh, travel agent in a travel agency in Australia. And my boss was really happy, uh, was doing really well apparently. And I couldn't believe it, that was me. I was able to do something and I wasn't dumb, I wasn't ugly, I wasn't stupid. Some people really appreciated my company. I wasn't pushed away by, by those people. They actually cared about me and it felt really, wow. Yeah, I would never experience that back home, I believe. So I'm like, wow, this is amazing, you know? Uh, people are so friendly and, and genuine and sincerely nice, you know? You can heal from everything that happens to you. Because of course, you could complain forever, you could 
victimize yourself forever. I've been there, we all have. Even though for you who's watching this, it might be hard to realize that, but believe me, you can definitely heal, survive of everything that happened to you. How do I know? I think people are very scared of those labels again, uh, in terms of depression, a burnout, loneliness, etc. And I've been through a few of those and uh, I realized that, Harold, you should not be angry, you should not be fearful, you should not be complaining 24-7 because you're not going to attract the right people. My biggest motivation in life when I wake up in the morning is to wake up with a smile and to never, never, never become that bitter person you meet up in the street or in the bus who can't even give you a smile. It's simple, but it's such a powerful motivation. You have the power to master your brain and to give the attention to the thoughts you want to give attention to. I thought it was abnormal. I thought it was evil. I really thought I would end up in hell. People never think, oh, he's into this, this and that. They assume I'm into girls, and that's fine. I've been for so many years. You're part of the LGBT community. But even in this community, often I meet some people and they're like, oh, are you sure you're gay? You're not gay enough, you have to gay up. Then I ask myself, where is my equality? Where is my respect? Where is my embrace the love? Yes, I'm very happy Pride does exist, I'm very happy this movement does exist, but maybe we're looking too far. The why of um, this project, I'm about to transmit quietly to others, is a thought actually, a thought that uh, I will reach the ones who are suffering in silence at, at this very moment. To live your truth is feeling good with yourself. It's not having this pulsation in your throat or in, on your heart or in your belly of I'm going to be judged, I'm feeling bad, I'm not good enough, I'm dumb, I'm ugly. So many people don't give attention to that. They don't fuel themselves. They they think they're fine, but they actually are blinded by their own experiences and they just survive. And I want to support people to live their life. And I want to help them to unlock their full potential. They have the key. And my inner flame always told me that I had to pursue that dream is the most important thing I have in my life. It's my mission. It made me realize I, uh, I was someone and that to be honest, uh, kept me alive. Maybe you realize this is you, that you could be me, that you have experienced the things I've said to you so far. Maybe you deep down realize that it's time for a change, time to eventually break that cycle you're in. That doesn't happen overnight, obviously. If you decide to reach out to me, I, I would be more than happy to assist you in your journey. I understand silence. I understand the weirdness of others. You'll be fine. You'll be great. You will, you will need less time than I've been through. You will save your energy. You will invest in yourself. And most of all, you will save yourself. Believe me, what I can do so can you. Talk soon.